Hello, Bill the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson, and today we're going to be doing Taylor Swift. Now, it's a ladies one, so we are looking back, we've done already Ariana Grande as a singer, we've also done Billie Eilish, so then that's really good, but the last drawing lesson that I did was Professor Minerva McGonagall from Harry Potter, played by Dame Maggie Smith in the Harry Potter movies, and the reason I've got these two opposite is we are now using this new grid. So check out straight away, uh, link in the cards and the description for the new grids video because I am doing this new grid that is a two centimeter grid and I start right in the corner. Again, we'll go over this in a little bit, but before we go any further, please do like and subscribe tick the bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded and made available and that would be fantastic now these are in the how to draw portraits playlist obviously harry potter there is a separate playlist for that but <clears throat> we've done ariana grande and that was on the older grid that i used where i got a center line whereas i'm, I'm using this new one and again I'm doing this so that it's easier to upscale everything, but do check out the How to Draw Portraits playlist. There's lots in there, uh, and there's a link in the videos to the actual portraits. There is the images that I actually use. I am putting up, uh, as new videos are done, the new images with the grid on is up in my community tab on my YouTube channel, The Art of Billy, which is fantastic. Again, please do use the hashtag Drawing with Billy. That would be amazing and do share on social media and and it's just great to see people developing their skills and, and and learning to draw better using these grids but this is just fantastic now i have finished all seven members of bts you'll see in this multi-image now uh this little clip of the seven drawing lessons again they are in the portraits lesson playlist there is also though i've got there's got to be over 140 lessons now, 130, 140 lessons in the general how to draw playlist. And that covers things with like cartoon characters and all kinds of different little creatures like that and some badges, logos, things. So there's a, there's a lot of different variety depending on your skill levels. But I do these portraits to actually help you grow and develop your skills doing things that are really, really complex. So anyway, if I just move McGonagall and Ariane. Here we can see, just get the bit of dust off the paper. Here we can see we have the grid. Now again, you can just see the line. This is the from the actual video lesson. You see me lay this grid down in real time. Now, I did this in ink, but I even draw these on. I draw them on with a 2B pencil, not a 2H. I draw the lines on darker so that you can see them. It just helps. Now, this grid is two centimeters. Again, look in the banner and you'll see the dimensions all the way across, but it just makes it easier. If you want to do inches, I've got A to J all the way across. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you want to do ten inches, you just draw ten inches. The last little line is half an inch. Down the side, we've got 14, one to 14. Again, same thing. You can use inches. If you want to make it twice the size, do four centimeters or two inches. It's very simple to scale this up, which is much easier. But I also use shapes. You can just draw straight in. And you can use shapes which help everything. Check out the link in the cards and the description. How to draw anything part one using shapes. And I say in there, you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else. And it's just a basis. That's for freehand drawing. It's very quick and very simple. So again, this is the grid that we are going to use. And we're going to start. Now, the, the equipment that we're going to use... I normally use a 2B, a 4B, and an 8B pencil, just softer. So this is the 2B, as I say, the trusty 2B pencil. I am going to be using kitchen roll, which is tissue, the blending stump, and possibly the brushes on this, because it's a very, very soft image. It's going to be interesting to do this one. Now, rubbers, this is I'll rub out the grids afterwards with the Mars plastic. And I use these kneadable putty rubbers, and... 
this is a used one this is a newer one and you can see it's getting dirtier uh, but this one's been used a lot and I use them for different things and I explain as I go and I have now got this this is called a uh, mono zero Tombow mono zero very fine eraser and I should be able to get much clean you know, small little lines than this one so it's just having tools to do the job now I've not I have used previously paint to get highlights but I do this and I will end up getting a paint pan but I've used gouache and acrylic before but I am going to do this drawing just allowing the paper to show through for the highlights and this is going to be interesting so now we are going to get the trusty 2b pencil and we are going to crack on with drawing Taylor Swift and this is going to be really lovely now I'm going to start I'm just blowing there's like little bits of dirt and debris just blown in across uh, on, on the paper so I'm going to start on the F line so we're going to come down from F and you can see we've got to 7 so F7 here we've got the strap that's on Taylor's dress and this strap curves over and then it starts to come down and we're going to come through two squares and this is a bit like a dot to dot and it's just kind of interesting how using the grids make things really simple so we're going to keep coming down and we need to come down to below the 11 line just making sure so yeah it's the 11 line now I'm just drawing a line down first and then going up to nine we just want we can see we've got a long thin rectangle and then if we come across you can see it's about halfway we've got a diagonal line but we're coming over through the E vertical and then here now you can see as this comes up we have a triangle shape going up back up to the line but we don't want it to go dark line above halfway so I've just got a little light line and that makes a triangle there so there's a shape for us so again as the back of a dress comes over to H there we've got a little triangle and then we can come all the way out past the eye line which is above the 13 and then we can come right the way down that's just past the edge and then this comes down to halfway between the H and the I now again just to the left of the H we have got a rectangle going up and it goes above the 9 line and this is the centre of Taylor's back so there you can see we've got a rectangle shape pretty much but the shadow on the back of a shoulder blade here we've got a V shape now we've not finished off the rectangle that's there but instead we're going to use this V so from the H on the 10 we need to bring that V up and then we've got an inverted V that's going to come down through the I just about just past the quarter 
And then again, we can see we've got this kind of little rectangle shape here. And that's Taylor's back. And then coming out just above the 12, you can see here we've got a triangle shape created by Taylor's right arm. Now, we need to take the line up from the back of his shoulder. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm just starting from the middle, is you can start anywhere. You don't have to start with the face. When you're using grids, you can literally start anywhere. So now we're going to go up to the right shoulder, which is below the 7 on the H line. And then we've got to come over diagonally. And that comes up on the 6 between E and F. And then we start to go up for Taylor's neck. Now again here, and we've got this strong shadow that comes down below the 6. And I can see there we've got a triangle. And that's a very, very solid shape. And we've got the top of his shoulder that curves over. So we've just got a semicircle kind of shape there. <clears throat> Excuse me a second while I just cough away merrily. Now C, coming down, you can see the arm comes down on the C line and it goes through this point on the 9 line. And then on the B line, it comes through below the 11. Just below halfway. And so... I'm drawing the arm and then it comes right to the elbow joint where the skin kind of comes together. Just on the 13, just kind of to the left of the center between A and B. Now, her arm, we can see curves down and above the 13 on the D line, but you can see how it's just, it's a long tube. It's a long rectangle shape. Again, we've got this kind of V at the bottom where her elbow comes off the bottom of the page. And then between the 14 and the 11, just below the bottom of the 11, we've got this little C slither next to the A. And that curves out. And then the hand comes up to the nine, the wrist. And we've got like a rectangle shape there. Now, again, that's going to curve out a little bit. And then I'm going to come up and the thumb is a rectangle that starts on the seven and goes up above the six. So I'm just drawing a rectangle there. That's going to be the thumb. The nail's going to go right through the six line. And then the edge of a wrist, the edge of a thumb going to a wrist on the palm of a hand. And then here for the finger, we've got another rectangle. And then we can make this, it's like, it's a slightly compressed box. So it's thinner at the bottom where it comes down to a hand. And then we want the finger going across the top. That's a little rectangle. Then we've got a little triangle in between the finger. And that's the fingers going behind the back. And then There we have the finger, first, well, second finger, then we've got the third finger, another rectangle, and this is just over the C line, below the seven. We want another rectangle that's going up, and then you've got the little finger that's just sticking out, come across horizontally, and then a little 
rectangle, which would be a tube going down. Now within this square between C to D, we've got Taylor's chin. That's coming across to this triangle. Now, up above the triangle, in the between the E and F, below the four line, we've got a little box which is going to contain the bottom part of her ear. And then we've got a triangle inside there, which is the entrance to her ear canal. And a little ellipse, that's going to be the bottom of the earlobe. Now, above, coming diagonally over towards the D and up through the C shape here, and we can see how this is going right the way up, goes up to the two. That's the darker part of her hair. And so we want a rectangle now coming back. And then there's a triangle there, which is the highlight. And you can see a little kind of leaf shape. That's again the highlight that's inside there. Now come out the back of a neck. There's a little triangle there. That's the hair kind of just bunched down at the back underneath the, the clipped up bum bit. Some kind of clip, a little rectangle there that goes through the F line just below the four. And then again, I'm drawing just a rectangle shape and that's the kind of bun at the back of her hair. Now again, it's got a kind of eight shape inside it, just curving in. So I'm just indicating that quickly. Now, here we've got this fantastic highlight that's between the C and the D. So I'm just drawing a little box there. We've got the diagonal that comes over, diagonal horizontal that comes over, and the same It comes midway between the two and the three, but it comes across through the C towards the B. And then we've got that rectangle at the top. Now we just want this semicircle that goes up over the top of a head. And I'm being very careful with this. And it comes right the way over to the F, curves over, and then curves down because I don't want to leave a dark, sharp line just yet. I mean, I, I will be adding more detailed lines, but we want to have this soft, wispy. There's a triangle for that hair. And again, the hair up at the top, just a semicircle that goes out. Now, just to the left of the B, below the three line, here we've got a kind of leaf shape. And this is the hair, just the shape of a hair that's coming down her forehead. Now her right eye just comes down and then cuts right back through the B4 line just underneath. So here I'm just drawing a little oval for Taylor's right eye. Now a nose is just a triangle. Now we've got two kind of triangles. You've got the triangle at the bottom where a nostril is, but you've got the triangle shape going up to the nose. Then we've got <clears throat> just drawing a C shape. That's the eye socket coming down to the nose and the shadow that's created. And then a left eye is just to the right of the C line. Again, we can see how the line comes up diagonally and it kind of comes just about 
to the halfway point. So that I'm drawing a little kind of leaf shapey lips with points at the end. And then we want just a little C curve shape for an eye. And then we've got the crease that goes above the upper eyelid. And then we've got the shape of the shadow and highlight coming down the cheek. So again we want the C shape of the right eye and then we can see the upper eyebrow behind that very highlighted bit of hair and the hair comes over and then her right eyebrow just a little rectangle that crosses over the B line and then we want a little darker line above. Now the cheek, you can see the eye comes down and then it's literally vertical coming down towards just above the five line where it comes across to then diagonally comes right the way across just above the the cross point of the B and the five and comes down to a thumb. And finally, we've got the shape of Taylor's lips. Now, we've got that semicircle for the lower lip. And we can see right up where the nose is, we've got a little triangle for that little bit between the top of the lip and the lower part of the nose. And then it's a kind of C shape. You can see like the letter C there with a curve at the top. That's her upper lips. And then we want another C shape inside. Just comes over through the C line. Lots of C's going on here. And then that curves down, so it's like a C on the side. And then we've got a teeth. And then we want this little swirl of hair coming down. C shape there, and a C shape there. Now we've got lots of check pattern down in the dress, but I'm going to kind of wing that technical term uh, a little bit later and the reason being is I, I'll just show you impressionistically what you can do with that down there but there very carefully using the grid because it's such a light picture using simple shapes and a bit of kind of dot to dot we have got a decent outline down now that we can now do a detail much more detailed uh, drawing next. Now we're coming in still with a 2B pencil and we're now going to do a much more detailed outline. And so we're going to start with Taylor's right eye. Now it's all going to be very, very soft, but we've got to be very careful. I still need to show you a line, a detailed line appearing that you can see. But if you do this very soft, then you won't have a lot of harsh lines to kind of deal with. So there's going up to the left of the B above the four, going up into a hair. And we've got the eye curves and it's about a third into where a nose starts to come across. Now, nose comes down and then curves around. 
and we can see the right nostril comes about to the center between B and C on the five line. And then we've got the edge of the nose that curves right over. It just curves a little bit there. Now, if we do this little curved line up above, which is a part of the shadow, and then we want a little D shape. Again, I'm, I'm not using the sharp point. I want a soft edge. So the sharp bit was started off there. Because this has got all soft edges. Now, that D shape needs to go about halfway and then the lower part of the nostril comes down there and then we've got this curve of the left nostril in that upper part it just curves in that kind of upper part of the underneath part of a nostril it's just it's just there anyway so yeah and then like I say we've got the curve that comes over and you see that that shadow goes up I'm just indicating where there's a highlight on the nose so I'm just tracking that up as well then we've got the eyebrow and then the lower part of a right eye with the eyelashes on edge of the iris and then a pupil right in the corner now I'm just filling in the pupil and the iris and then we've got the darker shadow above and then the crease above the upper eye you can see straight away we've got an eye just starting to look out towards us and that's giving us a good focal point. Now, I'm going to bring this cheek down. You can see how it just curves. So I've just done a little curve from underneath the eye and then a, a C curve on the cheek as it comes around and then comes down to the right of the B through the five line. And again, it just curves inward slightly as it comes down to the thumb. Now, Taylor's right eye, sorry, left eye, on the right of the image as I'm looking at it. Again, keep looking at your reference. We can come right to the C line, and that's where the T adduct is, and we've got a triangle of shade and shadow. And the eye goes up a bit kind of flat before it starts to curve over to the corner of her eye which is about on the center part here between C and D and again we can bring a kind of flattened curve for the lower eyelid and that then goes up to the curve then we've got the C shape and a pupil I'm just filling in some of that tone so now we've got two nice simple lines now the thumb I'm going to come down and we're going to curve the thumb up So we've got that nice curved shape at the top of a thumb. Then we've got the shape going underneath 
here we've got the knuckle joint thumb joint so we come out and just kind of bulges a little bit and then curves back and comes right on the B7 intersection now we want an opposite curve on the other side going up and then that goes right the way up to a thumb now we come down and we've got a really nice soft gentle slightly curving slope with this highlight that's then going to come down and the highlight comes inside the wrist again I'm just doing these lines nice and soft I'm trying to keep the pencil soft but not too flat now the edge of a wrist we want to curve up and we can that's where the highlights going to be and it curves off to the distant part of a palm and here we've got this nice simple curved shape coming round then if we come up to the top finger we can curve that over to the joint in the finger and curve that down we've got this little point right on the seven line to the right of the B and it comes on and that's the knuckle then we've got the flat of the thumb coming around the palm towards the finger then we've got a little triangle line going up and this is the kind of nice fleshy bit underneath your finger and then we've got the crease where the joint is there and we're just following the construction lines so again you can see these lines are quite dark but I'm not doing sharp I'm using the flat point because I want a nice soft image at the end and again the second finger that goes behind the thumb the curve comes across very close to where the chin's going to be and then that comes down to the right of the C on the 7 and then curves round underneath again there's a little just a little shape there for the nail again you just curve above and over the 7 line through the C and then just go up a little bit and curve it back over and you've got the underneath of the finger going off into shadow then you've got the third finger right underneath that just about level with the second finger then the tip curves underneath comes through the C line goes up and then you've got this kind of V that comes down and then the little finger juts out a little bit more curves around through the C line you've got the crease and then you can follow the path across and you've got the second crease and then that goes back and joins the hand now from the knuckle we've got the top of the hand that comes down towards the nine line then we just kink that little bit where the edge of a wrist bone joins is it metatarsals metacarpals metatarsals I think the anyway all the multiple joints in your wrist and then the wrist comes down just below the 11 on the A and then we've got this lovely curve that comes all the way down to the bottom and that's the elbow curving off now the arm we're going to go up through the B line and then there's a little bit of a curve for the muscle on her upper left arm and it curves back round and goes right through the C7 C9 sorry 
this is the C9 point here, right on the part where it curves up to the shoulder. Again, even though you can see a darker line, I'm keeping the pencil flat so that it's not a sharp point. So again, now coming down right to the bottom on the C. And we come up the page. And we need to just cross through the D13. And we follow the line all the way up the E11. And it comes through the 10, about a quarter, just past a quarter. And then it just curves over where the back of the arm touches where a shoulder blade kind of starts to go around. Now you can see already we've got a really nice outline starting to appear. Now we come down from the chin to the chin from the cheek. And this lovely little curved shape just above the fingers comes across to just past the halfway line and then we can bring the neck over to join the arm. Now I'm just going to indicate where that shadow is. We've got a crease on the neck where we've got this triangle. We've got a crease that goes through the E6. So we've got a little thin crease there, one going above it, and then we've got a darker one that starts just to the right of the E line, comes up, and then goes over. And then we've got another crease, comes off the shoulder, and goes up and joins the F. And then here we've got, and I'm, I'm doing this quite lightly, the strong shadow that comes down. Then we've got like a little bird shape. And then a kind of X shape caused by a hair. So now I'm going to track down from a neck comes down to the right of the F through the six and just slightly curve it as it comes through the G line and as it comes to the seven then needs to just kick out a little bit towards the H and then the top of his shoulder then brings this down and across right through the I9 to below the number 10 line. And then we've got the back that comes down and then just to the edge a little bit of the strap and then an arm that goes off the bottom of the page and then a dress goes right down to the bottom and then here you can see up to the H on the 12 the dress comes up and then goes through and just starts to curve over a little bit and then curves up to going up underneath the left arm. Now the strap that goes up over the top Got a little curve, a little C shape, and then this comes down, joins on the dress. Got the top of the strap and then the bit round the back that then comes underneath the top. And then the strap going up into the bright light, curves all the way up and joins the E line. And then we bring that 
line down to join in the little knot at the top of the strap and then we want to bring the outer edge down as well now right on the 8 between the G and the H I'm just drawing a little oval but very lightly because of that dimple in the center of that left shoulder blade now we come back up to Taylor's head and we're going to do her mouth so from the thumb we can follow the lower lip and that comes up to the corner and it's about on the third so that just curves and we want a little curve as it crosses over on the C and then the thumb is just pulling the lip down a little bit so this part on the left hand side is a little bit higher and you can see there's a little bit more dark here underneath the tooth then we want the lip going up curving over then we've got the little V center point and then the lip trajectory comes down to before the corner of a mouth here and I'm just putting a nice soft shade for the very corner of a mouth and then we've got the lower part of a lip or upper lip that comes up from the corner of a mouth and then that goes down to frame the teeth And then the center point of teeth I'm just like I did the eyes I'm just filling in that little bit of shade in that corner now we come up to Taylor's left ear we've got the lower eel ear lobe And then we've got this triangle shape for the entry to her ear canal. Just follow that curve up into the hair. And then we've got this highlight between the E and the F. It's a bit like a reverse J that was. And then the bun at the back where her hair's pulled together and then that curves out the highlight goes past the G line again there's just some wispy lines we've got a little dark line that goes up there and then these highlighted parts of her hair going right the way up over the top over past the D and then here we've got this triangle of darker shape now again I'm just indicating in the direction that the hair's going where I need the highlights to stay little kind of leaf shape And another highlight there gonna go up and over and then we've got here we've got a highlighted bit so I'm just drawing a kind of egg shape where that highlights going to go and then the shadow coming over the curve of a nose and then that shadow going right up 
into a hair again underneath jaw edge of a chin and then we've got I'm very very soft this strong highlight on the left shoulder so now coming back to this hair we've got this strong highlight that comes over and the one above between the two and the three line little highlight that goes right through the three lines so I've got a little square there bright strong highlight and the line that goes above and then the hair that comes down off the side the curve that comes around and then all these wispy bits of hair that are off into the background And that's our complete outline down pretty much oh nearly it's nearly a complete outline got a little set of lines in the bun here and then the hair at the back some wispy bits oh nearly missed that that was good that i spotted those now not only that like i say we've got all of these lines that are coming down but i'm just going to wing this i'm just going to lightly indicate the direction of a few of the lines and again this is that kind of crepe elastic at the back and there's one two three four lines in between each square one two three four and that'll give us down here we've got where the fabric joins that'll just give me a bit of an idea where we can put the lines in but that is our outline down of Taylor so now we're going to remove all of the grid lines and I'm using the Mars plastic it's just a big chunky rubber that I've always used uh, you know you'll find your own that you'll get used to using now the reason I use this paper is means because I've only got little bits of masking tape holding on the page means I can rub pretty tough to remove the grid lines from all around the drawing and this is where as I say to you in the video actually laying the techniques down you, you'll see me actually use a 2H pencil to draw some grid lines and you can't see them because they're very very light now I use this paper so that I don't get grease on the page off my hand because that can affect the pencil that goes down so again it's just learning lots of little techniques as you go along And this is, even though it's a very large eraser, because there's so much space on this drawing, I can actually get around quite a lot of it with this rubber. And you see, even inside the wrist, there's lots of space. I've just lost a little bit of the outline of the arm, but nothing major but again all the way up Taylor's upper arm I'm removing those grids this is the thing with using a grid as well you're actually doing something physical and figuring things out your brain is being stimulated and your hand and your eye are working together and that's a really good thing for you to do 
So again, these bits on the back. I will, I say, I've just lost a whole load of her arm. Because I'm trying to use this as much as possible on the big areas. See that I've just lost some construction lines. So again, now in a face, I'm going to lose too much. So that's where I come in with this one, which is a little bit smaller. Just cleaning the tip on my jeans. Sometimes I use a tea towel. I've got a, oh, it's a glass cloth. You can see this now. I can get in and around the delicate parts and don't lose in a broad stroke. All the working out that you've done around her eyes, nose, lips, those kind of areas. You see, even there inside the thumbnail, inside the finger, the gap in between the fingers. So I can see that I've obliterated some of Taylor's fingertips. Again, up on the cheek, these construction lines, I can get rid of those quite easily and quickly. Now in the hair, it's not too much of a problem to remove some of the construction lines because we'll be drawing that in as we go along but you don't obviously want to lose Taylor's eyes or nostrils or things like that so here down by her arm I can get rid of the bits that overlap very close to the drawing line and not actually lose it which is better than I did with the pencil inside the back so I've still got that little disc of shade that I needed inside the V's created by the shadows down the back and there's quite a you know there's a good bit of work in actually rubbing out the construction lines but if you do them very lightly they're much easier to remove and if you go to museums and you see some of the working out artwork that old masters did you can still see the grids and I can remember seeing that I mean I've mentioned before when we go to the when me and my wife have been to the Victorian Albert Museum in London as well as other museums and there's so much amazing work from around the world in the Victorian Albert Museum so and there you can actually see because you can get close you normally only see on a screen or in a magazine or a book a little photograph of a painting that might be 10 20 30 feet in length and you just think you know you're seeing it really reduced down small but when you actually see it up close you can see the construction lines and it's fantastic and the grids so now I've just swept off a load of spent erasers I can now actually see what other bits need removing again right to the edge of the page now I'm going to come in with my electric eraser 
because that's got some much more direct control. Like I said, I can just pull out these little bits very quickly. So I'm just looking where I need to pull some more out. Like I say there's some in the hair inside her ear. Now I, I have only used one of these very recently. Like an electric pencil sharpener. I got one of those because they're just really, really good. So again, I'm sweeping the spent bits of eraser off. And that allows me just to see those last little bits. And I'm sweeping them onto a piece of card. So I can then easily put them into the bin rather than sweeping them on the floor. So now just coming back in with the 2B pencil. Let's just put in some of the lines that I did rub out. I say it down here on the wrist and on the fingers, just putting the curves back in and the chin coming under. And there you can see we've got a cleaned up outline down now of Taylor Swift. And now we can do the shading and that's going to be fun because it looks soft and complex, but it's just take your time, practice and build it up slowly. And you'll see, we'll have fun doing that next.